Oh, thanks, Demir. Um, so I'll give a, a, a brief introduction here, and then I'll 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 let uh, uh, His Grace uh, introduce himself a bit, and then we can start uh, covering into the topic specifically. Um, so I am, as Demir said, Tanguistel Telenoris, and that's Telenor to friends, and I hope you're all my friends. I'm uh, <coughs> Baroness of the Westermark. Um, member of the Order of Laurel and a vigilant for the Order of the Pelican. Somebody decided that was a good idea. Um, I've been in the SCA since uh, this fall of 1982. If I worked that out, that's AS 16-ish or so. Um, lived in seven kingdoms coming here, uh, currently in the West um, as part of the Principality of the Mist and obviously Barony of the Westermark. Um, this entire event today is uh, the second time we're doing this. The first time was a January a year ago. And at the end of that event, we had the end of day wrap up session that that was held in the lobby. And uh, Duchess Ellis O'Byrne said that she really enjoyed the day and hoped that somebody in the future would cover a topic about the graying of the SCA. Well, she thought that was a good enough idea. She'd wanted to go and volunteer and go do it. However, there's one little snag in that, and that is because she is currently the sitting princess of the Principality of Awertha. And there's things going on today that she had to be at in person and travel to get to and that sort of thing. So uh, it ended up uh, that we were going to do the session that she requested, but in the hands of myself and His Grace. So uh, that's kind of how we got to be doing what we're talking about today. Um, and I'm going to let His Grace have a word or two, and then we'll come back and, and start introducing the topic. Your Grace. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's anyone here who doesn't know me. Uh, I'm Frederick of Holland. I live in the West at the moment. I've lived in the Mid-Realm and the East prior and subsequent to my living in the West. I started to loop around the world it, as it was at the time. Um, I put my age down on the uh, name section because um, it's, I think, relevant uh, to what we're going to talk about. And I'd like to make a statement that, um, you know, if people can, can uh, show me why it isn't true. I'll gladly admit that I was wrong. I don't think we need age-related DEI. I think all of it is covered by one or another of the diversity and inclusion uh, initiatives that are going on because there's nothing inherent about being old that isn't covered by physical disability, mental problems, uh, ability to uh, camp, for instance, or anything else like that. It's all age by itself is something I think, and I'm willing to be proved wrong, is not relevant. Now, the combination of factors that occurs with age means that sometimes older people are going to need help, not simply because they've had that much time in grade, but because they have a combination of factors that uh, will affect them. And now our seem to have people who have either gone away or not gone away. Um, so I'm 76 and I'm pretty healthy. And at the same time, as various of my campmates know, I'm not as able to do everything <coughs> as I used to be. And I Teller is one of my campmates. Yep, yep. Um, people pick on me and make me sit down and drink and 
not pound in all the tent pegs and things like that. And Maybe I've taken up from time to time. You know. And I've taken up not setting up a pavilion, but camping in my van simply because it involves a good deal less effort. So um, anyway, that was that's my thesis. And uh, this is round table. You know, yep. everybody, everybody gets to say something. Yeah, I wanted to introduce the topic at this point a little deeper. And uh, I, you, you bring up some incredibly excellent points. Um, I was going to describe them as there is nothing about ageism in and of itself that makes it special. But what it is, is an intersectionality against all the other things, including, um, uh, you know, Everything from there are old queer people, there are old women, there are old uh, people with disabilities, there are old uh, just, people, just go on, there are old. But for every coin, there's, well, for every coin, there's two sides. And so I can recall a, a, a bright, fresh faced young college student first joining the SCA and, and looking up with awe at our old wizened dukes, who turned out to be 28 years old, um, you know, and so our, our uh, you know, old wizened dukes of age 28 are now in their 70s and still with us. And uh, this is this is both fabulous and also um, makes me scratch my head because uh, I, I, I'm looking at the other side of the coin for a moment and wondering how we can get younger people in to maintain the, the flow instead of having a large lump of people who in the 70s and 80s were the bright faced young college students who are now in their 60s looking at their formerly old wizened dukes of age 28 in their 70s. So there is that aspect of it. And, and so um, there's a level of support that has to come not just to people, but from people. And, and so, um, I, 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 your grace, may I tell the story of how I ended up being in your camping group? Sure. I ended up with uh, Alistair looking for a place to camp at an event where we arrived late on a Friday because, well, we have jobs. And uh, there was hardly anything left except for a little tiny corner of a patch of a triangle behind his grace's encampment. We asked if, politely if we could camp there. And yeah, he was yeah, sure got to the end of the weekend and it was time to break down and we were in mundane camping equipment. So it went down pretty fast and we looked over and saw people who needed help because there was a lot to do. And we came over and helped and we've just not stopped doing that. <laughs> and, and so um, what does it take to support people across the intersectionalities of everything that, that come together when folks are um, you know, no longer those fresh faced young college kids we once were. And, uh, and one of them is when you see somebody who needs help, don't stand by and just watch or say, well, I'm done and I'm going to leave. So I've got, I've I, got see, another I, I see Frederick has his hand up. Thing to say. What is old? Yeah, great question. Okay, you're 61. I'm 76. To a large extent, I'm in as good a shape, except for a little bit of endurance, as, as you and Alistair are, and mm -hmm. uh, not in, in, in much better shape than a number of other people who are significantly younger than I am. Um, so age isn't a number. Correct. People age at different rates. And um, gray hairs, <clears throat> gray hairs are not an indicator. Um, I see, I saw a message from Javier of Flash yep. on the screen. So if she has something to say, I'd, I'd love to hear it. Uh, if I could find my unmute. Okay. Yeah, all right. I agree about the intersectionality about it's it's economic. I think for in our case, like it's economic and mobility. I definitely think that's the case. 
But there is another aspect of the graying, particularly of the of the um, of the West Kingdom, because we're, you know, we're the late earliest, and so we have the longest members, and that is the transition. And I'm I'm trying to word this. I think we're facing a challenge of many of us are transitioning from being, it's not exactly the hot young thing, but it's like, we're transitioning into being elders, right? We're transitioning into being more of a support and learning. Um, you know, I'm with Steingram, right? Steingram in his day was like this hot stick and he's 70, right? So he's never going to be that again. So he has a lot to offer, right? And he goes to fight practices and stuff. And it's, you know, whether or not people to listen to him, that's, that's kind of a different subject, but just that whole mindset and, and having the support to know that it's okay to transition. It's okay that you're going to reinvent yourself in a new role. And I think a lot of us are, are facing that transition. And I think we were maybe the cutting edge of the SCA on that. Cause we've been around for so long. So hope that makes sense. Your grace. Uh, yes, it does. <laughs> A tremendous amount of sense. And one of the problems that happens with ageism, and this is something that I've worked very hard, is those of us who can do need to let go. We need to say, yeah, I could do it. But I'm old, I'm an elder now. I shouldn't be the one who's running the kingdom. I shouldn't be the one who's being the herald. I shouldn't be the one who's doing the jobs. I should be a resource. And I undertook starting about five years ago to get rid of my jobs simply. And it itches me, it irks me. And I see them being done well, not the way I do. <laughs> That's not necessarily badly, but certainly, certainly not the way I do. And there's this, you know, want to shake people and break them loose. And I know that if I'm going to be a proper subject of the crown and let the old order change giving place to new that I've got to let go. I remember he hearing words almost exactly the same when you took Vesper Herald your last time through. Oh, yeah, I see. <laughs> that, was the, that was the first job I um, deliberately got rid of. It was, you know, we've got to, we've, we've got to and jean you put it very well, we've got to become elders. And those of us who have spent most of our life doing would, can find that very, very difficult. But the team, I noticed you on. on um, it seems to me that at least I've looked at some statistics and they cover the whole SCA, not just our kingdom. But it appears that it isn't just a bunch of old people and not enough new people. It seems to be fairly, fairly constant. And I know there's a lot of people active now who are in their 30s or who have children that they bring to events. So yeah, we're getting gray, but it isn't like all the old people are falling off the cliff and there's nobody behind us from what I can tell anyway. No, the point, my point, and I think John Dion's point is that as we age, oh, we need to take on new roles and let the young people do the roles that we did when we were that age. And I'm comparatively new to the SCA compared to you guys. Uh, Telenor and, and Fleeg and Jean-Vierre, I'm 
relatively new. So I've had a lot of jobs. There are times when I've held four office, uh, five officerships in a single year and held those positions for two or three years. And physically, I injured myself at my second event. And while it improved a little, it never got better. And now it's causing some real problems for me that I can't do some of the things I like to do. So I'm sort of, I have been sort of forced to let go of things like uh, field heralding and feast cooking and things like that. So things that involve standing for a long time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I think that I'm not going to contradict your thesis, Fleeg, but what I am going to do is to say, what do we do about the intersectionality of all of it? What support is needed that, that has to come from, you know, uh, the kingdom level or from the, the, the level of those around us? Or, you know, where, where, where do we take this? Can I say something? I'm, I want to jump in on this. And that is, um, again, I think mobility issues um i think that's you know something that in in the site people i i really i applaud them for giving us better descriptions of the site you know and i we had that class earlier the um one thing i think is one tool that i think has been good is it's mobility and money really i think mobility and 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 having, I have really appreciated the live streaming of events. So you could still feel like you're a part of things when you can't go. I think that has, that is, I'm, I'm not saying it's the only answer. I'm just saying it's been very helpful. So I would encourage and, you know, fostering that aspect of, of, of inclusion and, um, yeah, I mean, we are an outdoor camping kingdom and I would never like, you know, for a variety of reasons, I can't go to, I can never go to an event that's at the Cloverdale site, but people love the Cloverdale site. So I would never want to say, oh, we can't have it at the Cloverdale site. Same with West Ontario. I love that site. I know it's really hard to get around, but I would never deny anybody though, because it's hard to get around. Um, I think it's just an open question of, Mobility issues, I think, are key for the West Kingdom. So, but again, the online presence has been really great in maybe tackling how to how to make inaccessible sites more accessible. I think might be high priorities, at least for the West Kingdom. I know it's required in the event copy that it list um, characteristics of the site. Uh, whether the terrain is rough, whether there's water or paths or cell phone access and things like that, that's now a required part of event copy. So that's certainly helpful. Yeah, I, I thought they did a great job for Crown, the last Crown. I thought that description, and they kept updating it, and I, I really appreciated that. I thought they did a good job. I don't think this actually contradicts my thesis on because that is, I mean, you can have young, young people with mobility problems. Um, and I'm not talking about young compared to me. I'm talking about, you know, people in their 20s and 30s. There are some that have serious mobility problems. And um, so it's not purely age. Age is, as Telenor said, an intersection of a whole bunch of problems that come at us at various rates. Um, my mobility is just fine. Um, my ability to I think regulate my activities to meet my current uh, ability to uh, sustain them, not so good, but that's a mental thing on me. I think the only, I'm not being, I hate devil's advocates, but I think I would just add to 
again, like what I said, it's, it's a mindset of transitioning, but then, you know, honest to God, there is ageism out there. I've certainly faced it in the job market and, you know, we're a reflection of our culture. So I don't know if there's an answer to that any, in the SCA any more than there's an answer to that in the, in the, um, in the greater, you know, greater culture. But I do think there's, there's ageism out there. It's like, why do I have to listen to you, old person? Hmm. I, <clears throat> that's just young punk. Isn't that? <laughs> not... <clears throat> well, I've age? confronted direct discrimination in uh, several events. Um, based on my mobility issues. I've been mocked for them. Uh, basically, it was suggested I was faking it or something. And um, that certainly hasn't felt good. I've also stopped camping with a certain group at a certain event because since I have physical limitations, I couldn't do certain things. And they said, well, if you can't help set everything up and do all this other stuff, we're not gonna help you set your stuff up. And I need help setting my stuff up. So I've moved to another camp far away so that I can have people around me who seem to support me. And, you know, this, this is people in the West. These are people okay, and with again, peerages and things. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that that's ages. That no, is I discrimination. Was I said it was about about my mobility limitations no. that I was basically told that either I was faking it or that, you know, they didn't want me around. So I also joined the SEA when I was older. So I was uh, over 50 when I joined the SCA. So I already had, you know, some limits there, but it's been kind of awkward. <laughs> Might point out too, there's a whole series on the Calberters Corner or Calberters channel about road to retention. And some of those, the road to retentions have been really, really good. And they have included topics on um, trying to keep older members or people who played and maybe they had kids and you know, maybe they're interested in coming back and and how to help people in that kind of age bracket. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a cultural thing and I'm not sure, I'm not sure where there's any solutions here. I mean, when, when you guys had this idea, was there a goal of the conversation? Was, was Ellis thinking, I'm trying to think of productive what outcomes saying? of this discussion, actionable items, right? <laughs> I think I think she wanted more to share awareness than 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 have specific um, actionable items. I think she wanted to like hear what people were having age related intersectionality with other things and how they how they did intersect and how they don't intersect sometimes and and um and and you know uh, this is me just making guesses because we really didn't spend any time talking about what our intentions were so my bad sorry no 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 i'm i'm hip deep in project management certification classes right and if you ever have a meeting you're supposed to have a goal for the meeting right <laughs> well, okay. Part of the goal is build a community. Okay, so now we've got people that are here and and talking about uh, this interesting topic. And uh, and and your grace, Fleet, you had something that you wanted to contribute. Um, yeah, a, a roundtable as a form of meeting is not well adapted to provoke, to creating actionable items. Um. It's much more, I mean, when it's a good round table, and I like this one because uh, it's not just me and Telenor <laughs> mouthing off. Uh, the other, you can do that. We're good at The that. other two of you are, are contributing. Uh, and that is the whole point of the round table is everyone contributes. This can create awareness of a problem, 
this can create um, changes of heart in people who are there, changes of mind in people who are there, but it's not, it, ha it is a prelude, if it is anything, to a meeting where possible solutions can be proposed. You understand what I'm saying? My head, so welcome to my brain. <laughs> I wonder if, like the SCA for all sorts of reasons, in the West Kingdom, this is really the only thing I can speak to is the West Kingdom. We're very in, we rely on the individual to take care of their own needs. And that individual may pay up with, pair up with other people or groups, but it's up to the participants to supply their own needs. And I, I do wonder if when the SCA started or early on, if there wasn't a more of a create a public space mentality uh, where, I don't know, the kingdom or whatever, some, some organizational group that wasn't an individual group set up on a regular basis and it was supported, you know, public spaces, a viewing gallery, if you will, right? And so you'd always know that if you wanted to watch the list, um, there was always going to be a place for you because it was um, government provided. I don't know how else to say it, but we, we really don't have that culture and, you know, getting particularly with the mobility thing. I think that's, I think that's a key factor of the, of being older, um, knowing that, oh, well, I could go to the public space and I and have a seat. I can watch, I can watch the activities, or I have a place that's in the center of activities where I wouldn't have to travel really far uh, to camp out for the day with my my little cooler and participate in the um, in the group activities, right? So, but we didn't we we didn't evolve that. And I know there have been efforts to make on a on an in, individual event basis uh public spaces where people could you know put their chair down or, or just be able to say yes this is where i can go and sit but it's very it's it's not an institutional guarantee so i i wonder about that as a potential future part of the solution i don't know but um. Okay, um, you're absolutely correct. There is no institutional thing about that. We were a bunch, and I can speak now as, as having been there. <clears throat> Households formed very, very quickly after it became obvious that we weren't going to stop doing this after only a couple of events. Um, and for a long time in the West, the great households um, provided that general space. Uh, Geraldine of Toad Hall, the Toad Hall, and the young people that were around her, young people, <coughs> was one of them. Uh, Stephen Lorraine's household was one of the great households. Um, Randall of Hightower had a large household. Um, and usually these were open people who invite people in. It wasn't institutional. Um, the SCA, I keep telling people, very rarely has top-down operations worked in the SCA without the enthusiastic support from the bottom up. Um, this is what we get for having the freedom to do things like maybe chopsticks and have grand adventures and the romance of being in our world that we have created is that unless there's stuff coming up from the bottom, you can make 
edicts, you can make institutions and nothing will happen. I mean, even things like the College of Heralds, uh, which looks like a very top-down thing, didn't start out. We knew there had to be heralds. Okay, that was one of the supposed to be's of recreating a medieval atmosphere was there had to be heralds. And it was when a couple of very big mouth peoples, including Randall of Hightower, um, who suddenly showed people, okay, this is what the heralds can do. That a bunch of people said, oh, I want to be a herald too. I want to do this thing. And so the heralds built up their top down. How? That hurt. <laughs> they built up their top down structure from the bottom. Um, and that statement, I know what I meant, <laughs> but it hurt my brain. Came across fine. It, it makes sense. I mean, if you're going to have a, let's, let's imagine a tower, a tower of heralds. Well, to build the tower, you got to start at the bottom, then you build it all up and now you've got a top and someone can make pronouncements from the top. So it, it made sense, Fleeg. The other part I like about it is you knock that guy at the top off every couple of years and put somebody else up there. That is important. Okay. So we have a we ha we so far have had a square table, but there's five people here, and I know Demir sees himself as the 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 moderator and the the person running the the the, the video. Um, but I'm curious to see that that compared to when I started, you would have been one of those old wizen peoples, Mr. Demir. So, from your perspective, what do you um, see about this discussion? As someone who has started relatively recently and has in several aspects taken on trying to learn some generational knowledge for its continuance. Uh, my question for this group is, how do we support the ones who are going through their own journey of letting go and have not been as successful as Fleeg, as an example? How can we support them? How can we help them? Because, you know, passing on of information and jobs and everything is going to happen eventually. How can we, yeah, that's my question. How could we help? And I'm frightened of the opposite is that that information doesn't get passed on and gets lost. Which is a valid fear. And I wouldn't necessarily set myself up as a success other than the fact that I actually managed to get rid of the jobs. I've been in this it's kingdom long enough to know that exactly. that's an accomplishment. <clears throat> and it wasn't easy. But it's still in here. You know, I'm only 50. I'm still young. And, you know, intellectually, I realize I'm not, but emotionally, Mostly, some of me is only 35. So I have two comments to Demir that I don't think answer your question, but I want to say them anyway. And that is, first off, in just a processes and procedures thing, um, element, I'm a, I'm a big believer in writing down processes and procedures, but the problem, and even like, let's say you have a spreadsheet or you have an online tool to do a thing to help track it. it, it the problem isn't the creation, it's the maintenance. And it's not only the maintenance, it's keeping the software and the technology that supports that platform up to date. And that requires monetary investment and it requires time. And that's that's always been a challenge. And I'm, I'm not saying I have an answer to it. It's just Captain Obvious here saying, saying what I see is one of the challenges that uh, are that impede the uh, continuation and passing down of, of knowledge. And as a tangential note, something I've thought about is history 
Hirsch has done a fantastic job of capturing the first 10 years of the SCA, but there's there's like some historical incidences in the SCA's history that I haven't seen actually written down. And when discussions of culture and changing our culture and changing the game or how to improve the game come up, because I live through those experiences, I have a very different view than somebody who doesn't know anything about them. So just, again, I don't have an answer for this, but I think we're losing a generation, right? We're starting to pass and knowing and being able to capture those early days or, you know, oral history, capturing oral histories, particularly of the two incidences, which is pay to play and the uh, peerage points. Those two incidents, I think were very, really fundamental to how the SCA currently operates. And I think it's important to have that written down um, so that's just another factor. Anyway, sorry. Thank you. I'm gonna shut up now. No, no, no. That's. I appreciate that feedback. I had forgotten peerage points. I, had I hadn't heard of them, and I think I might be glad that I hadn't. Oh, you are. <laughs> um, have you have you written them down, Jean Pierre? I feel like I was on the outside enough of it to not be the best person to say what happened. Um, I know Steingrim, like he was around for what, he was around for a time when they, a bunch of kingdoms got together and they had a treaty to like leave. And then it, it didn't come down to it, but, and that might've been pay to play. That was uh, pay to play. That was yeah. pay to play, yeah. So, and then the, the best, I <laughs> the peerage points thing, I only have my version of my understanding and I, my historical understanding of this may be wrong, but I think it led to like the empire of Adria. Might be wrong there, but that's my understanding of history. But my point being is that we're starting to lose people who have this institutional knowledge. And I think this type of institution, knowing what the group went through, the society as a whole went through, I think really does, I'm not, it, it puts perspective on current problems. Does it solve current problems? No, we need to always evolve to face current situations. But I think it's, you know, those who don't understand history or forced or are gonna repeat it. I think it's important to have that institutional knowledge. So somewhere there's gonna be an, oh, I missed it. There was an oral history class that I didn't get to go to, but it's another factor of the graying of the SCA or the graying up particularly of the West Kingdom. I just um, have to say we're really lucky that we have our history site like that is Hirsch's passion project and way ahead of a lot of kingdoms. And is somebody being trained up to take care of the history site if something uh, Kip. should happen? To happen to uh, Nara's Kip. Who? Uh, Jared. Jared of Castlewood, is it? Jared of Castlewood. Yeah. Um, he is the person who has the backups for the site and the knowledge that can serve to maintain the site. Now, he's not going to be the kind of person that will maintain the content of the site. That will have to be someone who says, okay, I'm gonna step up and do that. But he, he has the software backups. He's got the ability to keep the tech. He's got the ability to keep the websites going as they are as they are but not um, to keep adding to them that's the problem is that as Tamir said it's, it's his passion uh you can't institute that kind of passion it has to come from somewhere within and i have no idea how to find that next person who has that time and energy to do things like, oh, yeah, I just changed uh, the, the whole who's who to allow people to identify, to, to put pronouns in either by simply identifying as male, female, or non-binary or you can put your own in. 
And he just announced that. And it's like, nobody asked for that as far as I know. He just decided it needed to be done. It's, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm waiting to see what Tiana's one because she uses fee and pay. <laughs> yes. <well. laughs> as in, you know, the, the, the kindly one. <laughs> Lords and ladies pay, not anything else. I mean, there were quite a few back in the seventies when women were tired of being subsumed into male pronouns. No, well, there, there was the so whole thing of more. forms of address, Ms. appeared. A whole, a whole lot of them. <laughs> but it seems to me there's a historical thing that so many people don't realize that that already started way back then. So it seems really new now. And I think that relates to the issue of keeping people informed, passing along the knowledge, passing along the history. And we're supposed to be a historical organization more or less, but I'm not sure how many people really We care are about weak that. on our own history. And again, what, what, what we need is, I've, I've been interviewed four or five times about you know, how the SCA started and what my feelings are about the SCA and the historical things like that. People get the idea, oh, I, I want to do this, I want to you know, record this and, and put it up and I give an interview and Vanishes into air, thin air. Hmm. So, I mean, that, that, which is what makes Hirsch's work so remarkable, is, is that he has kept it up for so very long and made it into a thing, which even if it froze tomorrow, even if it, you know, he stopped updating it tomorrow. It would be a remarkable achievement that he doesn't, that the awards recommendations, I mean, he set up that whole software for reporting awards. Before then, we had a chancellor of, of the uh, something or other, I forget what they called it, who would get the set the court reports and who would digest them and give them to the page. And that the person who was doing that became tired and didn't bother telling anyone. And it started to totally break down. Six months out, the award wouldn't be reported yet. And that's when Hirsch said, We have computers. We can do this. And now, you know, awards are up in, in the order of precedence, the awards list. Usually, with, I mean, if it's gone a week, Hirsch is on people going. Wasn't there a court last week? I can attest to this true fact. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and having having been uh, tasked with such things, Demir, how long does it take you to get the court report in from noon today? It's already done. Haven't you confirmed it yet? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What happened? Uh, Alistair and I held a baronial court today and gave out two orders of the Western Mark, one for Nyssa and one for Demir. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, and as soon as we get done with today and we take about three breaths, I'm going to go check my email and have a, a message to confirm the, the court business. <laughs> Reply all. 
and yeah, and it's no fancy. I mean, something something occurred to me, Jean Vieve, in 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 response to your saying that you didn't feel that you were the right person to write out the whole thing, and that's probably true for a lot of us about a lot of things. But I also looked at. I can remember reading the the descriptions of um, an event called the last tournament. At least the article was called that about uh, May Day of was it sixty six fleet or 66? yes, never figured out sixty six, and uh, and following on just the initial bit of articleness, which wasn't particularly long, were pages and pages and pages and pages of updates and expansions and and oh and also we did this oh and don't forget that and and and. And so I'm thinking that perhaps you would you would be able to make an adversarial post, adversarial in the sense that it's like, uh, you know, I'm putting this out here uh, as sort of a challenge for those who remember more or were more in deeply uh, engaged in it than I was, and see if there doesn't follow up with, well, don't forget this, and I remember this, and blah, 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 and it goes from there, as a way to increase the the, the content of the of the history uh, the history channel. History. If you know me, I, honest to God, have almost no competitive or adversarial bones in my body. <laughs> I'm really, I'm like the biggest happy, happy, joy, joy, tea in the garden kind of person you're ever going to meet. But I, I could totally see, I was just sort of thinking about this. I do think I could put a, a call out because I do think the two things the whole peerage point thing, my memory of that was that somebody came along in the bod. This is my memory. And I could just say, hey, this is my memory. Can you please correct me? And let's have a class about this because people really ought to know. Yeah. And, it was, and it was somebody had an idea on the bod or in the governing people that, well, you could get attendance points and volunteer points and, and this and that and the other thing. and. Um, I think that person eventually went off and formed the empire of Adria, which is really that it's, it's, you get, you can, I knew someone once who was like the emperor empress because, and I'm, you know, it's, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just a different way to do things, right? It, it's you, you, you participate and you get points and then you gain your, your rank via this point system. That's how they wanted to play the game. And then the pay to play thing, I think, is a little better known where they, the bod hired some, and Fleeg totally knows this, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. but, you know, they hired some outsider to come in and he's like, well, we're going to make everybody pay their membership fees if, or they can't play. And there was quite the rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> um, Provine is the name of the person who was hired. And that particular episode is not relevant to this panel, but is a, it was a clear example of the board never failing to miss an opportunity, which the board is still doing. Yeah. Uh, I, I would but, say that where it does apply to this panel is that this is institutional knowledge that does not live with the people who joined the society in the last so it's been about 15 years or so, right? Maybe more? Well, pay to play was 94. Yeah, okay. So 94, there you go. That was the first pay to play, that is. Yeah. And God. current um, was later than that. And, you know, I've got reports of the West Kingdom Welcome Committee. And... Uh, right. I think I still have somewhere around the broadside of the board, which was a, a broadside that I made for three years, I think it was. Every board meeting, there would be shortly thereafter a broadside reporting in inflammatory terms on what the board had done and in fact, occasionally on things the board had done that weren't bad. But um, as far as pay to play is concerned, um, one of the things that one of the people who would know a lot about that would be Ellis. Um, oh, yeah. 
I, anyway, I ended back up in, to, back to ages. Korean Empire was founded in 1987. So that would be when. Yeah, the and um, Peerage Points was in the 80s because there was a play, again, institutional knowledge. <laughs> there used to be this thing called the West of Our Players, a little group of people that like to piss off a lot of people. I'm aware that they, of their existence, but I yes. never overlapped with them. Oh, well, no, I'm I'm like the second Baroness of the Westermark, actually. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, in terms of <laughs> and, and the Westermark players allow me to share you the Gerhardt for portfolio or portfolios. But he did the um, a vacuum cleaner mm, salesman, salesman at the bot or something like that. There's a play all about peerage points. Uh, vacuum cleaner salesman in the court of the bog. That's yeah. Yeah. So. Yes. Anyway, so that was that was definitely the peerage points thing. That was definitely in the '80s. So if Adria formed about '87, that would jive. Anyway, Demir just just poked us, in case anyone didn't notice, um, that it's time for us to wrap up. Um, I don't think there's anything to wrap here. We've had a nice conversation. Uh, I've been very happy that both the team and John Dia were here and that Demir contributed. Uh, and I think that um, the recording of this will probably get more results than we've got from just the pentagonal pentacle of people we've got here. Tyler? I think I think you're right. This is a this is a discussion that's got a lot of places that threads could come from and continue on. And uh, who knows? Maybe that'll happen in the comments section of the YouTube video that this ends up getting posted to on the West Kingdom YouTube channel, uh, or maybe elsewhere. But um, you know, I wanna I wanna thank Ellis for her idea of having it and wish she was here understand why she's not. Go Ellis, you're doing a great thing, what you're doing. And I especially want to thank Fleeg, who on very late notice and with not much background was uh, was 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 kind enough to volunteer and and, and come in and, and kind of like be one of the- uh, Volunteer, the, yeah. The, 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 <laughs> you'll get over your sore arm after a while. Trust me, it'll be better. <laughs> Okay. Any thoughts from our friendly?